I don't feel the cold. I don't feel the wind's chill against my skin. I don't feel. His breath, I suppose, was like the wind, brushing its way down my neck, and the whiskey smell like stinging kisses. His eyes piercing through me like ice. But his smile melted away any of those thoughts and made me feel warm. Big girls don't cry. You are a big girl, aren't you? I was a big girl in a big place. A place where you felt grown up with grown up people and grown up conversations. In a hurry to prove to everyone that I was a big girl. But big girls do cry. And big girls do say no. But with no one around to listen, words do nothing. But he was gentle. He listened. He smiled. That smile was so, so dangerously inviting. You are a big girl, aren't you? This is what big girls do. Gentle to rough in a matter of minutes, like a pillow filled with feathers suddenly land in a crushing blow. Boys always want to stay kids, and girls always want to grow up faster, my mum says. You know girls mature faster. But it seems like yesterday I was hand in hand with my mum going to the shops, looking up at her like a giant. Me so small, my tiny hand in hers. Is that it then? Boys want to keep that innocence, feel sheltered, looked after, that whatever they do, they can't be blamed for it. At the cusp of learning right from wrong and being able to not think of the consequences. Girls want to grow up quick, escape the view of being fragile, petite creatures that might break if held too hard. Wanting to prove that we can do anything, that we are tough, that we don't need help, that we're independent. Dreaming of growing up quickly, getting married, having kids, not like boys. Dreaming of becoming firemen or policemen as they play cops and robbers. Girls look to the future with something to prove, not relishing the innocence of youth, a dangerous game. But who could blame us? Wrapped in cotton wool from day one, afraid to be let out of sight for fear something could harm us, damage us, corrupt us. There is nothing wrong with being young, and nothing wrong with wanting to grow up, but not that fast, and when it's too late, you start to reminisce about your youth, your childhood, your innocence. Tonight, I did grow up too fast. A man thinking he was a boy and a girl thinking she was a woman. Like entering the plane and you as prey for all those who take you in. Some will say I deserved it that I knew what I was doing. Others will say that I wasn't entirely in the wrong, but I'll still have some part to play in taking the blame. I was playing a dangerous game. I knew that no good could come of my actions. I just shake my head and say no. I just wanted to see what it was like. I couldn't understand how I was being treated like a child when I knew that I wasn't. And they'll respond, your actions were childish. But what about his actions? Was he not childish? Was he not reckless? Was he innocent? Did he not hear me say no? No. No. No! He had talked. Talked for hours. He understood me. He listened. He got me. 
It was like he'd been there before and he wasn't being condescending. I could talk to him about everything. The pressures of life, of how people treated me, what was expected of me, and he just listened. I should have seen it that he wasn't even listening. Just letting another stupid girl pour her heart out to him, pretend to listen, pretend to care. And all the while he was thinking ahead to the end of the night and what he could get out of it. I should have seen everyone else look at us all night. Like they knew the truth but no one wanted to tell the poor girl. Did they see me all tarted up and think to themselves that I should learn a lesson? We left the pub. I was slightly drunk but not enough to not know what was going on. But he knew. He offered to walk me home, telling me how a gentleman couldn't leave me to walk home on my own. That it'd be too dangerous that he'd like to. How was I to know? We held each other up as we stumbled down the street, laughing and stumbling. Him a little more bambi leg than me. It was like I was walking him home. He needed it more. He told me it was nice to meet a person who got him. And with that, I thought I had found someone who got me. He told me we were like, and then he told me how beautiful I was. Beautiful, not sexy or some phrase a boy would use. He was a man. But it was nice to hear that I was beautiful, wanted, respected, treated right. He held me as I held him. Then he looked into my eyes. I couldn't see anything. They looked dead. No life. But his smile took all that away. Like looking at something that brought sunshine to a gloomy day. We kissed, and that's when I felt it. It was rough, not soft. He could have been kissing anyone and not me. It wasn't about who he was with, but what he could get. I backed off, I held him off. I must have shown fear or weakness, he could sense it. For me to pass at me again, I resisted, he didn't. He pushed on top of me. You are a big girl, aren't you? I struggled trying to break free from his grasp. I had no words. I shook my head. I didn't look at him. I couldn't look at him. I cried out, no, no. This is what you fucking wanted, isn't it? He came down on top of me, crushing me. Breath so close it was like our breath was one. He held me down. I kicked and kicked, but I couldn't get him off me. I cried out again and again, no, no. If he didn't hear me, I wanted someone else to. But no one did. All I could see were images of me walking hand in hand with my mum to the shops, playing with friends as a child, getting a piggyback from my dad. But all I could hear was his excited breath and all I could feel were his cold, rough hands. It was so cold. Tears froze in my eyes. All I could see was a blur, a heavy figure looming over me. I tried to hit him again and again and again. I wanted each strike to feel like I was protecting anyone else who had come in contact with him. But the first time I saw life in his eyes, but it was a mixed look of fear, pain and regret. And then suddenly it happened. I began to see the whole scene laid out for me as if I was looking at it from above. My body pale and limp. Only his finger marks lay on my neck. The only thing giving colour to my body. Maybe the people in the bar weren't looking at me all night trying to be a woman. But at this man acting like a boy. They knew his kind. They'd probably seen him before trying to chat up young girls, but why didn't they tell me? I just wanted to end the night. To be back home in my safe warm bed and my safe warm house. Where I had people to love me to protect me, to tell me everything was going to be okay. Big girls do cry, but no one heard me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.